Hello, everyone. My name is Kathleen Lee Consulting, and this is Think Tech Hawaii's Business in Hawaii segment. Um, we hope everyone is doing healthy and well during these times. Um, on the show today, we have Keith Amania, who is a candidate for mayor for the city and county of Honolulu. Hi, Keith. Hi, Kathleen. Thank you for being back on the show. I understand that, um, and I saw it as well, that you were on Think Tech uh, a couple of weeks back. So we appreciate having you um, on here again to talk about uh, leadership, especially during you know times like these when you know we the whole well, the pandemic has been affecting everyone globally. So let's just launch into this. Tell us a bit about your background. Well. Before we get into that, I, I just want to acknowledge what you've already mentioned, that we are in indeed unprecedented times. These are difficult circumstances for all of us. Uh, people are losing their jobs. They're worried about uh, whether when they'll get their next paycheck, whether they'll be able to pay the rent. And so we all just need to work hard, work together, stay together. I also want to acknowledge the hard work that many heroes in the community are doing to keep us safe and healthy, whether it's our healthcare workers, our first responders, grocery store clerks, uh, and even our school teachers who are plugging away um, despite these difficult circumstances where schools are closed down. And so um, given that um, we've been through crises before in Hawaii, um, I'm sure we'll have crises down the line uh, but we have to do what we've always done is work together, stay together. Uh, I remember about 10 years ago during the Great Recession, uh, we had tough times as well. Um, when I was running high school sports at the time, there were a lot of fiscal challenges. Um, there was talk of canceling junior varsity sports in our public schools, and that would have been devastating to thousands and thousands of student athletes across the state. There was talk of even um, canceling the state championships, but the community rallied around and supported our student athletes and came up with the funds to ensure that junior varsity sports and our high school state championships would continue uh, during that economic crisis. And I'm confident we can work together and stick together in this crisis and we'll come out even better than before. Very awesome. Um, let's go over, you know, um, to, to segue into what you just mentioned, let's talk about um, your leadership style. Tell us a bit about it. Well, I, I always try to uh, lead by consensus through collaboration, lead by example. I always try to surround myself with like-minded people, with good people, um, people who are just as smart and hopefully smarter than me. Um, I, I like to use the team concept and no individual can accomplish as much as a collection of individuals. So I always try to um, surround myself with great people, uh, people with integrity, with character. And I always try to show people that you have to have passion in whatever you pursue, give your 100% all in everything that you pursue and that you need perseverance and tenacity and the will to get whatever needs to be done, done. And uh, that's no different in this current crisis. We need teamwork, we need leadership by example, and I hope to do that um, now and in the future. I, that, that is absolutely wonderful. I think, you know, we all need leaders in our community right now. On that note, um, in your leadership position as a candidate for mayor for the city and county of Honolulu, how are you currently dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and what initiatives have, um, for your team have you implemented? Well, there's so much need going on in the community and I've been serving on First Lady Don Ige's School Breakfast Task Force for about a year and a half. So I knew already that many of our public school students were struggling with getting nutritious meals every day and I knew once this, once this pandemic crisis started that the uh, supply of nutritious meals would be uh, shrunk even more. So uh, I, I banded together a group of nonprofits and other people like Island Insurance's Foundation, Marcus Mariota's Motivate Foundation, uh, an army of my campaign volunteers, 
and the principal and staff of both Kaulavela and Pololo Elementary Schools. Those are two low-income schools uh, where almost all of their students qualify for free or reduced lunch. And I knew that uh, if school is going to be uh, discontinued for an indefinite period, possibly through the end of May and through summer, that our keiki would not go, uh, would go without nutritious meals. So we've been able to step up through the help of many, as I mentioned, and we've been serving 1,000 meals a day at those two schools, both breakfast and lunch, and it's been a great success so far. We, yeah, we have seen that um, on you know your social media accounts. So thank you and your team for doing that for uh, the youth of Hawaii. Can, I know we have some photos of that meal distribution program. Could you uh, tell us a little bit more about the school meals initiative or anything else that we need to know about it? Um, is it still going on? And you know where can people go for these meals at this time? Sure. Um, I also need to mention that Bamboo Catering and ABC Stores has stepped up and helped prepare the meals for us to distribute, <clears throat> excuse me, to those two schools. And so I want to acknowledge <clears throat> them as well. Um, uh, the, the program has been very successful, so successful that the DOE has actually taken over <clears throat> the meal distribution at those two schools. Um, I believe there are now close to 50 sites across the state where public school students 18 and under can get free breakfast and lunch and hopefully they utilize that <clears throat> i also should mention that there's a lot of other community groups and nonprofits that have stepped up to serve meals to keiki and kapuna and it's really gratifying to see <clears throat> our communities banding together and stepping up to serve a need during this critical time so we certainly are proud of our efforts, but we need to acknowledge that many, many other people have rallied together and helped uh, step up during this time of need. I'm looking at the photos right now and thinking, wow, those meals look absolutely delicious and I'm getting a little bit hungry. So it's really great that uh, you and your team are helping out on this initiative. Uh, on that note, um, and you've been out in the community for many years. What do you think and believe has the COVID-19 crisis revealed about our community? Well, I think it's highlighted the fact that there's already been many families suffering. In fact, there's many studies out there that show that approximately 50% of households are, are living paycheck to paycheck. And this was before this pandemic situation. Now that situation is heightened and I'm sure the percentages are uh, markedly higher and it shows the need that that we need to step up. We need to address the uh, uh, struggle that many, many families across the state are enduring and that this crisis may last a while. So we need to marshal as many resources as we can from whether it's government, nonprofit, private companies to help those in need because uh, this may take a while and we need to do what we always do is take care of each other and step up when others around us are in need. I absolutely agree with that. Um, uh, you were talking about resources. So um, what do you think are some considerations for local businesses uh, as they not navigate through this crisis? And um, what are some available resources that can help them out at this time? Especially with well, local businesses. Sure. Um, well, what, what, what I hope local businesses do is, is to the extent they can, keep their employees uh, as employed as, as, as long as possible. I know it's tough, but employees are the backbone of, of all of our companies. They're the most important resource, if you will, or asset. And um, if companies can keep them employed, keep them with paychecks, uh, even if it means uh, reducing their hours or providing flex benefits so that they can spend time uh, here and there to uh, watch over their children who are at home uh, because school is closed, uh, anything that businesses can do. In terms of the businesses themselves, uh, we encourage them to utilize whatever the government can provide, whether it's federal, state, 
or city and county assistance. Uh, I'm sure many people know the CARES Act was recently enacted, and that's hopefully going to be a huge boost to small businesses, at least in the short term, particularly the pay payroll protection program that can provide relief for up to two months for small businesses of 500 or less employees. So hopefully um, our government can step up as well as companies that have the wherewithal to help other businesses and, and even the nonprofit sector. Um, like I said, so far, our state and our, our island has risen up and people are stepping up to help each other. And I hope it continues. I really appreciate that about, you know, our community in Hawaii. I, I see the aloha in full force building as well as the people you're collaborating with. So it's been very inspiring in spite of all um, everything that's going on. Um, so as for the people that are, what are ways that we can support local businesses um, and the community during this time? Well, one way we can support local businesses, the ones that are still operating like our restaurants is to um, uh, patronize them if, if you're able to. Um, they need as much business as they can get. It's really tough, especially for our restaurants. So. Uh, my family tries to do what we can here and there to support our local businesses. So that's certainly one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it is to volunteer in the community or donate to your favorite charity that's feeding meals to our Keiki and Kupuna. Um, those are other important ways to serve our community. But perhaps the best way that everyone can serve our community is to stay home as much as possible. And if you go out, to keep your social distance of at least six feet uh, from each other and to wear a mask whenever you're in public. Um, the sooner we get rid of the coronavirus in our communities, the sooner we can all get back up on our feet and return to business as usual and get the economy kick-started again. I agree with that as well. Um, how have you and your family been spending the time at home? I know you've been and helping out, which has been great. But the times that you are, how are you coping? Well, it's an adjustment because my wife and I um, have never worked at home before, but now we're working at home and, and we know it's necessary. So we're, we're making the best that we can of this situation. And our son is a sophomore in college. He was going to college in California. And uh, like most uh island college students who went abroad to study they're all back here and and learning online or through distance learning uh if you will and so that's an adjustment to us too because he was in the fall semester away from home but now he's back and he's having classes throughout the day and given the time difference with the west coast it's it's interesting because sometimes he has classes as early as 4 a.m. or or later uh, in in the evening hours, and so it's a big just adjustment for all of us. But uh, we feel fortunate that that you know we're doing okay, and that's why we want to do what we can to help those who are less fortunate in our community. 4 a.m. is a that is a very early time for class. I think when I was structuring my college schedule, I the earliest was probably 8:30. So. Kudos to your son for, for that schedule. Now, let, let's round it back to, uh, going back to you. Um, for anyone out there who has been following your career, your involvement, um, and, and one who followed that path of leadership, what's, uh, what are pieces of advice that you would like to give to these individuals? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's important to, to lead by example, lead with integrity, uh, lead with character, uh, to show that you're gonna work as hard as everyone else. It's important to surround yourself with like-minded, good people who believe in the common cause of doing what's best for the greater good and not any particular special interest. And it's also important to not worry about who gets the credit. You just need to plug away and uh, do what needs to be done and the credit will take care of itself. It really doesn't matter in the end, as long as the final goal is accomplished. So uh, those are kind of the values I, I try to live by. And it's 
been pretty successful thus far, and I hope to continue doing the same things. Well, I, I believe the community hopes so as well. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add that I, that I haven't covered? Anything you want to know about the program or yourself or, you know, what you're currently doing? Well, I just want to reiterate and thank the community for stepping up to help those in need. These are difficult times, unprecedented times, at least in most of our lifetimes, but it's important that we stay together. That's what makes Hawaii special and why we choose to live here, because we look out for one another and we care for one another. And uh, as I mentioned before, we need to thank our, our, our first responders, healthcare workers, and and everyone else who's out there, uh, you know, putting their health at risk and safety for the betterment of the rest of us. We, we owe a huge debt of gratitude uh, to everyone out there who are making our lives as best as, as can be under these difficult circumstances. Um, I also want to encourage people to continue to uh, serve the community, to get involved, um, to pay attention to, to what's going on in our community, including in politics. And, and one way people can help is to register to vote and to make sure they vote. Uh, we have low turnout, maybe a, the lowest in the country, and that needs to change. If we really want to effectuate change and improve uh, the quality of life for everyone uh, on this island and across the state, we need to participate. And the least we can do is register to vote and actually vote. Thank you for that reminder, Keith. Um, on that note, and just to, you know, just to make things a little bit lighter, what is the first thing that you're looking to do once lockdown has been, once it is no longer there? I know it's, we don't know how, when that'll be the worst thing that you would do after lockdown. Probably go to, one of our parks or hike uh, Diamond Head, do, do something uh, out in nature that's currently not allowed during this lockdown to keep everyone separated and, and flatten the curve of, of COVID-19. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, to take advantage of the fresh outdoors and uh, the beauty of, of our island. We live in one of the greatest places in the world, if not the greatest. And I look forward to enjoying the things that, frankly, many of us took for granted. And I'm going to appreciate it much, much more when we're finally allowed to leave our home. I same here. I, I did not realize how many things I took for granted, even just walking out, being in a grocery store without having to worry about proximity to people. So. Thank you for that reminder, Keith. Um, and again, for everyone tuning in, thank you for um, going over to Think Tech Hawaii. This episode will be available on YouTube. It is also streamed live, so you can visit us at thinktechhawaii.com. Once again, Keith Amemiya, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me, Kathleen. It was a, it was a pleasure.